How to put together a winning college application, the ultimate guide you need. Keep in mind, lots of stuff go into a successful college application, and your odds of admission will vary by the institutions you apply to, as well as your own set of strengths and weaknesses. Watch this tutorial to stack the odds in your favor and find out the steps you can take to put together a college app that will help you apply to a wide area of schools, from your local state colleges to the most selective institutions. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I'm doing marvelous if you were to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. Now let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about how to put together a winning college application, the ultimate guide you need. First, you want to maximize your ACT and SAT score, but just focus on one test. Because the thing here is that if you want to improve your college admission chances, chances you want to study for the ACT or SAT and you want to get the highest score you can right that's the most efficient way now your SAT ACT score is a very important factor in admission the thing here is that having a score above a school's average range will greatly improve your odds of admission that we all know that now if you are below their admitted student range your odds go down so it is critical critical to get the highest possible SAT ACT score for you and this will give you the flexibility in terms of where you can apply now let's just kind of give you a quick example here for harvard for example which is taking the best sort of some of some of the nation's best institutions so for harvard if you have set math of 740 to 800 that's pretty good set evidence-based reading and writing you want to score around 720 to 780 for composite act you want to be around 33 and 35 for English, ACT 34 to 36, and ACT Math, you want to be around 31, 35. Now, everybody understands that Harvard is one of the most competitive colleges in the country. Consequently, their set and ACT ranges can be intimidating. Now, remember though, that their middle 50% ranges for the set aimed at 780 or 800, meaning that the top 25% of, of, of admits have perfect scores on those sections. So if you want to be competitive at Harvard, for example, you need set section score at least in the 700s. But the closer to 800 you are, the better chances you have. Let's switch a little bit to Boston College, for example. Now, their set evidence-based reading and writing is in the range of 650 to 720. For math, they have 720, 770, 670 rather, to 770. That's for set. For ACT composite, you are around 31 to 34. Now, we understand that Boston College, if you are in Massachusetts, especially in the Boston area, you have a very competitive college there. Now, they're not as competitive as Harvard, but you need SAT section scores in the low to mid 700s to be a competitive applicant. So if you have any score of 650 or lower, just forget it. They're not going to call you. Let's move on to another uh, university in the Boston area. So you have University of Massachusetts, Boston. This is a public research university. So usually section scores in the 600s or higher will make you quite competitive, while anything lower than 500 will put you towards the bottom half of their admitted students. Now, what I'm trying to tell you here is that you can see that the higher your SAT or ACT score, the more colleges you can apply to competitively. So it is important that you maximize that you put all your energy on your SAT or SAT score to give yourself the most options when applying to college. Now, choose one, focus on one test. You wanna focus on studying for one test because the vast majority of colleges in the United States, they will accept both tests equally. So, and they're not favoring students who have taken both. So don't think like if you take both, you're actually increasing your chances, you're not. So if you do worse on one text, as a matter of fact, that could hurt your chances. So it is more efficient when it comes to directing your energy, your mental energy, your intellectual abilities. It is much more efficient to focus your time on studying for one test. Okay. So if you split your time between the two, you likely end up doing worse on both than you could have if you have just focused on one. Now, if you're wondering which one you should take, you have you want to do more research about 
what the act and we'll have an, an entire show on that as well um, an entire show on that topic but you can read more about the act and the sat and what you want to do is you want to compare your strengths and weaknesses versus the requirements of either exam and you can figure out which test you will do best on now remember though you want to take also the act plus writing or the set with essay because if your goal is to pre to present the most versatile application you want to show them that you, that you are not only good at math and english but you are also an eloquent writer which is why you gotta have that you have to have the act plus writing or the sat with essay now granted not all colleges and universities require the writing sections of the act and sat but if you want to have the most competitive the most attractive the most interesting app having the writing section the writing version under your belt is important all right i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are also having a conversation today around how to put together a winning college application. I'm giving you the ultimate guide you need. If you love the clarity and quality of the content so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you are informed in real time when we drop a new show. We release new shows every single day on a variety of topics from um, college research, from, from uh, finance to budgeting to sports or entertainment we cover the whole nine yards now the second thing you want to do is take two set subject tests so in addition to taking either the set or act as i said earlier you can help put together a, fl a very flexible and versatile college application by taking two set subjects let me explain to you why the selective colleges i mean colleges in general but especially the selective ones they require or would recommend set subject tests as part of applications for example princeton recommends two set subject tests harvard does not require them university of chicago sometimes require them but harvard for instance will highly recommend them unless you have extenuating circumstances now we recommend that you submit two set subject tests at least you may apply without them if the cost of those tests represent I would say you know it's kind of hard for you financially speaking or if you prefer to have your application considered without them it's up to you we're giving you here the the options to to beef up the options to solidify your application so that you can increase your chances of being admitted now some colleges don't require set subject tests at all but they say that they will still consider them as part of the application right so at for example the university of michigan they've said very publicly and even colleges that don't use set subject tests for admission often use set subject scores to place students in first year classes especially when it comes to science math or language right so what i'm trying to say here is that it's a nice to have even if a college does not require it you still want to have it so that you can increase your chances of being admitted and once you're admitted of increasing your chances of getting a great first year class right and um so you can apply to schools that require them but also give you an additional credential anywhere you apply right now make sure you take the two set subject tests in different subjects right so for, for instance never take math one and math two if you're interested in engineering programs for example try to take one subject test in math and one in science right for any other programs take the two that you you really are comfortable taking and you think you can do the best on now you want to beef up your extracurriculars extracurricular activities are important now i'm not telling you to choose to to, to pick one extracurricular activities or sports over another there is no magic set really there's no magic combo here you want to keep the following rule in mind though if you pursue extracurricular activities and you want to put together a college a great college application remember that depth is better than breadth what i'm trying to say here is that it's better to stick to one extracurricular activity and master it and be great at it and be excellent at it 
than spending your time and wasting your time and energy over five, six, or seven extracurriculars where you just not really good at all in any of them, right? It's more impressive to be deeply involved in with two activities and have the leadership roles in both than to be in eight, 10, 12 clubs or sports where you just participate as, as a, yeah, you're just a, particip a participant. So if you really are just listening to me right now and you are a junior or younger, try to get involved in a few clubs. Very important. I'm talking to you right now. You're 16, 17 or 15 years old or even 18 years old. You are listening to this right now. Try to get involved in a few clubs, sports in extracurricular activities you're passionate about and you want to always go for leadership position leadership positions now granted everybody cannot be a leader but you want to have a significant post you want to have a critical role in the organization don't just join join anything and everything just to be able to say you know i was in i was in 10 clubs i was in five clubs focus on a few activities you're really passionate about and can make a difference doing all right now one thing you also want to think about here is that make sure for every activity you add to your application you have something valuable to say about it have you won an award have you held a leadership position have you impacted the community on which you guys have worked have you volunteered in a particular role that was critical for the community or the city where you are again what i'm trying to say here is that death matters more than breath okay don't feel pressure pressure to fill out every available activity space no two is fine having two is great all right i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere welcome back folks to another edition of sweetie kiwi we are still having a conversation here around how to put together a winning college application i'm giving you the ultimate easy easy by step easy 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 step by step now strive to get impeccable letters of recommendation now everybody talks about letters of recommendation are no longer important they are they are wrong if somebody's telling you right now that the letters of recommendations are not are something uh, of the past tell them they're wrong it is pretty typical for colleges to require two if not three letters of recommendation now, if you are applying at a selective college, they might even ask you for three. For example, Stanford University or even University of Chicago requires two to three teacher evaluations. Now, some colleges in the, in the nation have even stricter guidelines and they say they want the letters to come from the teachers who teach different subjects, right? So uh, for instance, MIT wants the letters to come from one math or science teacher and one humanities teacher so what you want to do here is to maximize your application reach you want to get two or three letters from teachers in different subjects and try to vary okay now the, the one of the things that is important here is that don't just select every teacher and get a letter from him or her if you want to make your app most competitive you want to follow basic letter of recommendations guideline in other words, you want to choose the teachers who taught you recently, ideally junior year, and can speak specifically to your academic strength. Don't pick a teacher who won't have specific positive things to say about you. And the, the closer you are to a teacher, the better. You, you, want, you want someone who, who likes you, who will vouch for you, who, will, who, will, who is ready to push you to the top, right? Number five see if you can land a third letter that's what i was talking about earlier two letters of recommendation is, is great but the more the better if you can land a third or fourth letter of recommendation that's even fantastic because the extra letter the extra letter all letters will add additional material to your application what you're trying to do here is you're trying to say hey listen here i am i'm a smart kid i'm a smart i'm brilliant i'm ambitious and I've got all those letters of application to uh, letters of a recommendation rather to beef up my application because I am a, I'm, I'm special. And you want to have that, especially if you are applying at the very selective colleges, you want to put all you want to stack all your odds in your favor. 
this is this is this is critical this is uh important especially one of the things that we've seen in our research is that college juniors and seniors who actually start early they have a a big advantage over the competition over other kids because they are really prepared they are really they, they've thought about everything they've thought about how many letters of recommendation they have how many they've thought about getting as high an act or set score as possible all right so it's very important to kind of do that get a third letter if possible now number six don't blow off your senior year senior years are important for various reasons this is your last year in high school this is the year where you have to focus on preparing your entry into college or university so you got to be very careful here colleges want students who have challenged themselves in high school with rigorous schedules now when you reach senior year you cannot go back in time and change your first three years of high school right nonetheless you can make sure your senior year schedule is challenging it has to be packed i'm not talking about you want to reduce all the partying all the distractions that will that won't help you you'll have plenty of time to to chill you have plenty of time to relax you have plenty of time to to enjoy your adulthood but now right now you have to work on the foundation of your future especially your application to into college so what i'm trying to say here is that trying to take for for example a full schedule with three three um extra classes right you want to have you want to have uh, some extracurricular activities you want to be a leader in something you want to be involved in volunteering you want to do a lot of stuff you need to crank up you got to do a lot of stuff you want to make a challenge in here right make sure that you take the most challenging you have the most challenging schedule available to you at your high school you want to connect with the teachers that matter to, who matter to you you want to connect with the principal you want to be involved you want to be seen that's what you have to do you want to use your senior year productively all right so the idea here is that by the time you actually send your application to the college they'll be like wow this kid has done a lot of stuff she has she has done a lot of wonderful stuff she has killed it she has nailed it or he has done this he has done that this is the kind of applicants we want to have on our campus this is the kind of thinking you have to to have so that the admissions officer when they read your application when they review your applications they're comfortable they are very happy to have you on campus I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still talking here about how to pick, how to put together a winning college application. I'm giving you the ultimate guide you need right now. If you are a junior or a senior, if you're 15 years old, 16 years old, 17, 18, or even older, let's say you are an adult you want to go back to school or you want to enter a college uh, you want to um, go back to school and uh, get get your degree you want to pay attention to this now if you love the clarity and quality of the content so far please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell we appreciate that we release shows every single day on a variety of topics and uh, turn on the notification bell like this content share and comment the last thing I want you to do here is to pick your essay topic carefully. Now you have to understand that you have to many colleges applications have extra questions or common applications supplement that give you the chance to share lots of info about yourself, right? What you want to study, why you want to go to that particular college or even things like your favorite movies, your favorite food, your favorite passion, your favorite books, whatever it is, make sure you pick your essay topic carefully. Make sure that you are showing them through the topic that you are intellectually apt, that you have the academic strength to pursue a degree at the institution. Be very careful in terms of the topics that you're choosing, in terms of you want the, those topics to reflect positively on you. You want, to exp, exp, you want to tell them how unique you are, right? Now, there is something called personal statement. We have already had an entire show on, on what a personal statement is. You want to double check that. A personal statement has to be has to reflect your uniqueness. What makes you different? What do you bring into the college? What do you 
what is your impact on the other members of the campus on other students right anytime colleges have on their applications they have supplements you want to pick something that highlights your strengths and always elevates your application all right now let's talk about what's a good essay topic how do you pick a good one there are many potential personal essay topics right now every student has different experiences and passions that you want to write about something that is meaningful and specific to you remember that you have an admissions officer who is a complete stranger who never met you that person will be reading your application you want that person to come away from your ace to feel like wow this is great i know this person they not only know you then they also know what you can bring to the college right now you want to write about something that will help tell your story and help show that you will be a great addition a great asset to this college don't just choose a topic because you think it's something colleges will like that's the mistake a lot of kids make a lot of seniors college uh, high school seniors make thinking you know i'm gonna pick a popular topic i'm gonna pick a topic that is in the news or everybody's writing about so i'm just gonna do it or even worse this is worse I'm going on Google and just copy and paste somebody else's essay. That's just crazy. You never want to do this. You want to express yourself. You want to be unique. Show the show the admissions officer your uniqueness. You are a smart kid. You are a, a brilliant kid. You're going to college. Do things the right way. Show that you are a great student, a great addition to, to, to the um, institution. So the worst thing you want to do is go and copy and paste somebody else's personal essay right so try to show what's pick a topic that is meaningful to you make sure that the topic reveals your personality and the topic allows you to write about something you actually care about and if you do those three things i guarantee you you are going to have a great essay your essay will be fantastic e even if you're not a great writer something will come out of it now one thing i need to add to though here is to be very careful about typos you want to proofread over and over and over and over and over the last thing you want is that people start thinking that you are a sloppy applicant because that's what really happens when you have a lot of typos in an essay you have grammatical or vocabulary issues going on in the essay you're just showing the the admissions officer that you are sloppy and you don't want that so take time to to use either uh, google you can use um not google you can use google all those um free free apps or free software that allow you to that allows you to to edit or proofread your uh, your college essay you can even reach out to someone who is uh who is expert in grammar or somebody who knows how to write just ask them to uh, review and edit your essay for you okay good luck on this i'm gonna end today's conversation so how to put together a winning college application the ultimate guide you need I spoke to you about seven things here and those are the seven things you want to pay attention to to have a winning successful college application one maximize your act set score but just focus on one text two take two set subject test three beef up your extracurricular activities four strive to get impeccable letters of recommendation five see if you can land a third letter six don't blow off your senior year seven you want to pick your ac topic carefully all right thanks for listening to me good luck on uh, your act your your your, your sets all those um tests you're taking and, the, and on the application i will talk to you another time but until then remember stay marvelous